Mali are taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some other stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed today. Journalists reveal the extent to which the CIA went to listen in on friend and foe alike. We look at why the noise that wakes you up is almost as important as when you wake up. Who Killed Malcolm X, a Netflix documentary, has some ideas. And Snapchat tries to make using the app more supportive of vulnerable kids. top of our news feed, Spy Games. The Washington Post and the German broadcaster ZDF have revealed how the CIA and the BND, that's the West German spy agency, were able to listen in on the secret communications between allies and some enemies for decades. Adamer explains. The CIA is the world's most powerful intelligence agency, but how far did it go to get that power? The Washington Post and German broadcaster ZDF have discovered a plot designed by the CIA and its German counterpart, the BND, to intercept top secret communications. Boris Hergelin, a Swedish inventor, was enlisted during World War II to design an encryption machine for US troops. The CIA and the BND purchased the company together in 1970. It made millions selling equipment to more than 120 countries including Iran, India, Pakistan, and even the Vatican. And every message that was sent using Crypto AG's encryption technology was being read by the US and Germany. Under Operation Tesaurus, later known as Rubicon, the CIA had rigged the devices and were monitoring everything they sent. The operation officially ended in 2004, but the intelligence kept coming and so did the money. Now, the Swiss government is investigating these revelations about how the CIA was listening to the world's secrets for half a century. All right, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. Now, this video of a hungry smuggler getting caught in India is doing the rounds. It was posted by a person in the Indian government and shows someone's attempt to bring loads of currency into India hidden in foodstuffs. As you can see, they even hid notes inside peanut shells, which must have taken ages. In total, it amounted to about 45,000 rupees. That's about $630. And there is much excitement in the gaming parts of the internet at this, the trailer for Call of Duty Modern Warfare Season 2, which people are betting will have a battle royale mode, finally giving what for many is the best first-person shooter, a Fortnite-esque game mode where every player plays for themselves as last man standing. And these pictures are from Google Earth. The mapping software has just released more than two and a half thousand incredible images, which are available for you to download and use as a Chrome extension. Every time you open a new tab, you will be greeted with a beautiful image of our planet. Now, how you wake up in the morning can affect how you feel for the whole day. And new research has found the noise you hear to shake you out of slumber is almost as important as how loud it is or what time it is. Here's Ezra. Have you ever woken up one morning and felt the impulse to throw your alarm clock at the wall? And sometimes it takes all morning to get rid of that initial anger. Well, you're not alone. And it turns out the harshness of your alarm sound may be affecting your morning mood. Researchers at RMIT University in Australia are investigating the sound people use for waking, specifically alarm tones, and how they affect the symptoms of morning grogginess which is also known as sleep inertia. So what is that? Great question. Uh, sleep inertia is a condition the human body and brain experiences in the process of transition from sleeping to awakening, which is what we know as full alertness. Now, within that transi transitional stage, um, the body seems to have a de decline in um, performance, which may include reaction time, memory, sustain sustained attention, and general cognition. So what we know at the moment with regards to the effects is that 
It may last for 15 minutes, 30 minutes is typical, but it has been shown to last for up to two to four hours. Researchers asked 50 participants what type of alarm sound they use. They also rated their grogginess and alertness levels. Participants who woke up to a melodic song had lower levels of morning grogginess than those who chose this sound. In other words, the less melodic the sound, the greater levels of sleep inertia. What we are explaining here is that maybe it's not a description of genre or type. It's the melody or melodic component. And by that we mean a melodic, a melody within sound could be a tuneful type of sound or something you could hum or sing to as classic examples of melody. An example they've proposed is the Cure song, Close To Me. Now, if we really listen to that song, it's incredibly melodic. The melodics are simple and easy for the human system to digest and comprehend. They're easy to hum and sing along to. And also within that composition, i.e. the song, there's multiple levels of melody. So the melodic structure actually changes as it goes, which we also hypothesise may be a good avenue for further research. For some professions, it's important they wake up alert and ready to go, like pilots, emergency responders and even astronauts. A negative groggy feeling might be downright dangerous. Take the 2010 Air India Express crash. 158 people died. And it's been revealed the captain of the aircraft had recently woken up from an in-flight nap just before the crash. And the reports say the poor decisions made after napping were attributed to the disaster. So if you want to wake up without feeling grumpy, trade your annoying alarm clock in for some rhythmic and melodic wake-up tunes instead. So you start your day in the best way you can. Now, a Netflix documentary on the assassination of Malcolm X has spurred the Manhattan District Attorney to reopen the case. Malcolm X was murdered in 1965. Three men were convicted of his killing, one man who admitted to it, and two others who maintained they were innocent. We'll keep spinning around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Wednesday. Now, a number of troubling, troubling climate stories out today. First, it's emerged that oceans are warming faster than expected. The currents, which carry warm water around the Earth and help regulate sea temperatures, are speeding up. This led scientists to question the forecast that they've made. This phenomenon wasn't expected to take place for at least another 50 years. And secondly, in the Amazon, a dangerous threshold is inching closer. Parts of what were once the lungs of the Earth, absorbing carbon dioxide and emitting oxygen, are now emitting more CO2 than they're absorbing. 20% of the Amazon has been deforested, which is why it's behaving this way. And the area being chopped down is getting larger all the time. More than 800 square kilometers is destroyed every single day. The actor Jesse Smollett is facing charges again. He was accused of lying about being racially and homophobically attacked last year. Chicago police charged him with disorderly conduct for apparently hiring two people to pretend to beat him up. At the time, it was seen as a ploy by the actor to gain sympathy and get an improved contract with his employers, but it didn't work. He was sacked and embarrassed and is now being charged again with six counts of lying to police. He'll be in court on the 24th of, Jan of February. 
The UK's Office of Communications is being given new powers over the internet. It expands the remit of the organisation that monitors radio and TV in Britain to look at illegal activity and content and online behaviour which is harmful but not necessarily illegal. NASA is hiring. The US Space Agency is staffing up ahead of missions to the Moon and Mars and is looking for an American citizen with a master's in science, tech, engineering or mathematics who has at least a thousand hours flying as a pilot in a jet aircraft. Now, if that's you, go to nasa.gov and apply. And this is Fiona Hewitt playing on her $200,000 piano, a piano that some movers just broke. Ouch. The F278 Fazioli was a one of a kind. It had four pedals, especially for the virtuoso Miss Hewitt. The moving company said sorry. Miss Hewitt said on Facebook that she hopes her Fazioli will be happy in piano heaven. Now, as you're probably aware, there are a plethora of streaming services out there and there's a growing backlash. Some online are complaining there's too much choice and if you want to watch all your favourite shows, you need an increasing number of different services. Let's say you want to watch Marriage Story, The Boys and The Mandalorian. This is the way. This will set you back nearly $30 a month because they are all owned by different streaming platforms that have their own monthly subscription fees. It's a symptom of a growing problem called streaming fatigue. Nearly half of US consumers say they are getting frustrated with the number of streaming services they need to subscribe to to watch the series and movies they want, and choosing what to watch is hard due to the widespread content. Even more are annoyed with content vanishing from their preferred service as a result of the rising competition between the streaming platforms that are all trying to entice consumers with exclusive content. So, even though streaming services rose as a cheaper and more user-friendly alternative to cable TV packages, some users are now approaching the same monthly fees and fragmented viewing experience as consumers have to jump between various apps and platforms and the sheer amount of content making it hard to choose what to actually watch. And now, people are trying to come up with solutions. At CES 2020, a $400 device was unveiled that automatically bundles all the streaming services you are subscribed to into a single app and device. While streaming services pushed piracy to be an obscure hobby, they are ironically creating a landscape in which piracy seems to once again offer the most affordable and user-friendly experience. So, are streaming services creating more problems than they actually solve? Well, Snapchat is used by a certain demographic of social media users and because of that, the company has had to create extra safeguarding tools to make sure its customers feel supported when they're using it. And we go to Madison Square Gardens now for a look at an animal doing stuff. And what this one is doing is winning a prize in a show. This is Seba, a standard poodle bred with this kind of curly hair for the gratification of humans. And this one has just won the top prize at the Westminster Kennel Club in America. The breed was created in Germany or France, depending on who's telling the story. And Wikipedia tells me they're the second most intelligent type of hound after Border Collies. So well done, Sheba. is all from the newsfeed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24-7 on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel. Follow me on Twitter. Follow, subscribe and add. See you again tomorrow. <laughs>